All right, first I should probably address the mustache in the room. I am sporting a little stash here because uh, tonight is our Halloween party. It's a little late, but y'all can chime in on the comments and just tell me who you think I'm gonna be for Halloween tonight or who my family is gonna be for Halloween. A little hint. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is Nuendo. We will have a look at some of the differences in Nuendo versus Cubase, or if you're not a Cubase user, just some of the things that make Nuendo special. There is a sale going on right now, and I think it's only on for another day or two, so I'll have a link in the description. I've been a Nuendo user for a very long time. I think I had version one of Nuendo, which was really exciting because at the time, Cubase was kind of old software, they redesigned this program from the ground up, and then I think that eventually became Cubase SX, as they called it back in the day, and then it just became the Cubase that we know now. And as my career went along, I went from Cubase over to Nuendo completely for quite some time. And when I started doing the YouTube videos, I switched back to Cubase and now have been enticed by Nuendo and some of the features that are in it. So Steinberg did send me the software and I wanted to show you what it is because a lot of Cubase users are thinking, do I need this? The, the updates and the purchase of Nuendo is quite cheap right now. And normally it's a very expensive program. Nuendo really is geared towards somebody who is going to be embracing and needing those post-production features. And I gotta say, if you've ever thought about doing sound effects and you're a musician and you're one of my followers here because you make music and that's what my channel is usually all about, I would say give sound effects, sound design some thought because the transition from working on music to going over to sound effects is not as far as you might think. There is a lot that crosses over and I also have to say that doing sound effects work is highly rewarding. Right now I'm doing music and sound effects for a video game. And being able to go back and forth is just so much fun. It really is. So keep in mind that you can do a ton of sound design in Cubase, but let's look at those special features that might save you some time. And if it's worth it, then you pick up Nuendo. So what I've got here is just a video I hacked together just of some shots of me walking around one of my favorite record stores, antique stores in Bellingham. Maybe in the future, I'll actually edit this whole thing together, make a little video, and then talk about how I would do sound design for a video like this, and then maybe even do some music for it, because that is what a lot of you are here for. And the first one I would show you here is something that is actually built into Logic, and we don't have it in Cubase, and I really wish they'd add it to Cubase, because if we had this feature years ago, this would have saved me so much time when I was working on videos and working on movie soundtracks. And lately I've been doing a lot more game audio, so we will talk about game audio and what Nuendo has in that realm. So if we click on the video file and go up to Project Video Cut Detection Panel, we see that we get this little menu here that gives us the ability to analyze the video and put cuts down as little markers to show us where the different scene takes are in the video. So basically anytime there's a camera cut, we're gonna get a little marker. And as a sound designer, this is just awesome because you can have ambience or background sound effects and you can just lock it to the marker or snap it to the marker. So I click analyze video. I'm just gonna leave the sensitivity at 50% and see what happens. We go analyze video and we're gonna add markers on a new marker track. Okay, so we can see that we've got seven video cuts after it does its analysis. I'm just gonna click add markers. And there we go, we get a new marker track and we can see the cuts up top here. I really like the look of this marker track too. So there's a cut, there's a cut, and there's a cut. You can see how perfectly that worked. Now if I want to, I could go up to media and go to media bay. This is where I do all of my sound effects kind of searching. So I'm just gonna type in city here and we're gonna look for a city ambience. So if I go city amb and we click on city light, and this is the exact same way this works in Cubase, by the way, but it's gonna drag this city light onto a track. And here what I can do is I can lock this to my video. So now I know I've got some cuts right here. And this is all outside. This one might be a little different because in this shot here, 
you know, I've got, I'm walking up the stairs and we can't quite see the street. So maybe at this point, I would do something a little bit different. Maybe have the, the ambience change as soon as it cuts to the one on the street right here. So I'm gonna take my snap settings. You can do this in Cubase. I'm gonna set my snap to events. If I take my scissors, you can see how it snaps to this first marker, which is a scene change. And then this one I'm gonna leave, and then this one we head inside. So I'm gonna get rid of the city as soon as it cuts to the inside of the antique store. There we go. So now I'm gonna take this chunk right here. I'll leave that nice and loud. This one I'm gonna fade it a little bit lower. You can hear how nice that ambience changes as we jump over to that one cut. So very, very powerful stuff. I wish this wasn't Cubase. So I feel like this could be useful for Cubase users as well in terms of music production, because sometimes you have music that you want to cut and have start exactly on a marker. All right, another incredible feature is that they give you the ability to add another video track. So you can actually just go project, add track, and add another video track. And Nuendo has the ability to compare the two different versions and show you where things have changed. And if you analyze the cuts again, you can then reconform stuff as well. And there's actually a, a setting in Nuendo called reconform. And if you have something called an EDL or an edit decision list, you can actually drop it into Nuendo and it will change your project according to that changed EDL. So for somebody working on sound effects and mixing and stuff like that, Nuendo is just at such a high level uh, for that kind of professional work. And then when it comes to other post-production features, there is just so much stuff in Nuendo that's not in Cubase. We've got things like field recorder audio import. So if you were on set and you were capturing sound with a regular system where the sound is being caught by the camera, but you also had a field recorder, maybe an uh, like something like a zoom recorder where you've got a microphone hooked up to it and you're capturing audio that you want to sync up with the other audio of the picture. We've got the Netflix loudness meter. You're mixing for Netflix. You've got stuff built in that's designed to help you get the levels right to deliver audio for a video for Netflix. Nuendo also has something called the intelligibility meter, which sounds kind of weird, but it actually uses AI to analyze vocals and show you on a little meter if your vocals are intelligible. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is a really cool feature that's Nuendo specific and a little bit more obvious than a lot of the high-end metering and analyzing stuff that comes with Nuendo. But this one is just a little thing that's called Clip Packages. It allows you to have a whole bunch of different tracks with sound effects on each one of those tracks. You can select all of the audio and save it as a clip package and it will remember fades and volume levels, which you can then import anywhere else or into any other project as a clip package. I'm working on game design right now, game audio, so music and sound effects. And there's tons of times where you have a sound effect that is a whole bunch of different audio chunks. And to be able to save those as a version, you know, this is version one of the explosion, you work on it and then you listen to it and you realize it's not working. So you drop that clip package in, maybe make it a different version of it, different levels, save that as a clip package. And now you have that as an accessible chunk of information as opposed to some project where it could be buried in your sound design sort of setup. So very, very cool feature. So many different ways I could use this feature. So I've got three sound effects right here, some footsteps and keys fade in right here. We'll adjust the level of this one, you know, and that's probably good enough for now. Select them all and go up to File, Export, Clip Package. So I'm gonna call this Foot Keys. I'm gonna hit OK. Then I'm gonna go File, Import, and I'm gonna go Clip Package, and then go right to my, my Video Project folder, and in there we see a new folder called Clip Packages. So I click on that, I hit open and there it is right there. All of my fades, my levels, all intact, ready for me to do something else. So I am going to be using this exclusively for the sound effects, sound design stuff that I do for the video game. UI things, anytime I have a layer of sound effects, I'm just gonna save it as a clip package, maybe give it a label, and then if I need to change that, instead of going back to 
the same project necessarily. I can just drop this in any project and open up that last version, make some modifications, save it as a clip package, export it as an audio chunk, but now I can always come back to that whole selection and make my changes to it at any point in the future. I can also save it for future projects, which is really cool. They've got incredible features for ADR or automated dialogue recording, or I've heard automated dialogue recording, automated dialogue replacement, that different versions of what people think ADR stands for. But regardless, it's when you have a movie shot, you have the production audio that was shot on set, and then you are looping or redoing the audio in the studio afterwards. And they've got all sorts of features that are gonna help you line up your audio and get those perfect takes for the actors. So you could have your actor standing in the studio. They'll have these lines that show up and give them a preview, almost like a count-in, things like that that are very specific to post-production and video. So excited about using that one as well. It also has incredible video game features. It has deep connections with WISE, W WISE. We'll get into some of that in the future. We've got one virtual reality thing. I don't even know what that means, Dear VR Spatial Connect Support, but I feel like that's gonna mean a lot more in the future, whether we like it or not. We've got some sound design stuff like this voice designer and the Doppler effect. Let's go just play with this Doppler effect because I've got a car that drives past. So it might be kind of fun to see how this works. We've got a voice designer, which allows you to take your voice and turn it into something, you know, otherworldly. We've got a voice designer, which allows you to take your voice and turn it into something, you know, otherworldly. We've got a voice designer, which allows you to... So let's try the Doppler effect. Looks like a, like a golf or something passing by right here. So I'm gonna go to my sound effects library. Let's go drive so that we get ones that are actually driving by. Let's take this little Honda right here. And first thing I'm gonna do is go to transport and turn on use video follows edit mode. I've got a key command shift E for that. I have a video on use video follows edit mode. It's probably my favorite feature that they added to Cubase and was only in Nuendo for a long time. It was probably the number one feature for me in terms of sound effects, sound design and music for video, but they, they finally added it to Cubase, grab this chunk of audio and I can just move it. And as soon as I see that car, I can go, all right, I want the sound to start a little bit earlier because it's gonna coming off screen. So we're gonna start right there and it's going to finish right about, right about there. So it gets out of the screen. So this is our sound effect so far. Doesn't sound very convincing. And maybe I'll make it a little farther on this side, fade it in. And I want it to be fully faded in by the time we see it on the left-hand side of the screen. So that's right about there. And then I'm gonna stretch it out further, actually. Let's go like that, there we go. And then uh, we're gonna do the fade out. Starts the fade out right about there. Let's fade it out a little bit further. And the way I'd probably use this effect is to actually process the chunk of audio with direct offline processing. So that's up here, file, direct offline processing. And all we have to do is go click on our plugin. We're gonna to go to Steinberg and we're gonna to go to pitch shift Doppler. And we're gonna say start here at 7.469. Uh, that's right after this chunk of audio starts. We're gonna end at, let's put the end point right here. We'll set the end point, look at that. All we have to do is click on it. This is really cool. And then let's just see what happens. So that's pretty cool. You could see how that would be useful. Gonna take some playing with it to figure out the pitch levels, but you get the idea of how this kind of plugin will work. You get to choose your sound and have it pitch shift automatically for you. So very cool. We've got help for Foley recording, help for dialogue, editing. We've got crazy amounts of surround sound. We've got up to 5.1 in Cubase and then up to 22.2. So you want 22 speakers around you and two subwoofers? You can do it with Nuendo. And last thing here, I just wanna show you this randomizer thing. This is an incredible little feature. Let's find a wood sound effect here for this dude as he's walking up the stairs. We're gonna pretend that all we have is one sound effect. And I'm gonna drop this in everywhere I think this guy's stepping. So there's a, a footstep right about there. We'll drag this forward, option drag. There's another footstep right about there. And another one right about, let's put another one right there. 
Okay, let's have a listen to this. Sounds horrible, right? So this is a very common thing in sound design. How do we add some variation? And of course, normally you just make sure you have multiple recordings of the same footstep and we can use it to process this audio directly. So I'm gonna select all the audio. I'm gonna go up to audio, a direct offline processing. We go to Steinberg, we go to other and there is the randomizer. So here you can see we can randomize pitch. So that'll be, you know, just obvious things with the pitch changes. Color probably has something to do with timbre or the harmonic content impact, maybe something to do with the transient at the beginning of sounds, and then timing, just shuffling the timing around a little bit. Maybe I don't wanna mess with the timing too much on this one, but let's do everything else. And I'm just gonna hit apply, and we'll see these sound effects change in the background. So they all kind of change, and let's have a listen to this now. Not bad, you know, maybe the pitch shifting was a little bit too much on one of them. I could do this now, I could take this audio and let's go like that again. And we're just gonna do the same thing to that. So I'm gonna go audio, direct offline processing, uh, randomizer, hit apply, and we'll do one more just random. So now I'd say this is probably my final footsteps for this little thing. Let's put our background noise in. And then let's turn this down a whole lot, maybe something like that. And there we go. We've got some random footsteps. I'd probably need to do a little more work on that, but you get the idea. So I hope this video was helpful for you, show you some of the things in Nuendo that are just super powerful. I am really impressed with some of these new features in here, things that are gonna make my life a whole lot easier as a sound designer. And there's other stuff in Nuendo as well, so I don't wanna sell it too short for non-post-production work, especially for composing for video. There's gonna be a lot of stuff in there that's gonna be very useful to you, but there's also some stuff that would be useful to mixing engineers as well. So. Hope this helps you make that decision. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the bell, and I'll see you in the next video.